So imagine you get a call from your worship leader that says, hey, I need you to MD next week. Or you're in a cover band and someone needs you to try to give the band some direction. I imagine you would be in absolute shock and terror because it is hard enough to play your own instrument with good tone, great passion, and great execution. It's even harder to do it when you're then accountable to help the whole band and whole team sound good together. If that's you or you think that could be one day for you, this is the podcast for you. On this podcast episode, we're going to talk about my beginner's guide to becoming a music director or an MD for your worship team or for your band. These are my five simple steps that I think within a few days can get you up and running, get you giving your band some direction, whether that be on a talkback mic or just leading through rehearsal. I think you'll find this content really valuable. Let's jump right in. Welcome to the MD School. We help train musicians, worship leaders, and producers to give their bands better direction. Much like a good football coach, someone who can give clear thoughts and direction to their bands can instantly improve the sound and performance level of all the musicians involved. Let's jump in right into step one on my beginner's guide to becoming a music director for your worship team or band. Step one, before every song, give out the song name and the key of the song. So this can be at rehearsal or this can be whether you're actually the music director for an event. Simply when the click starts for the song or the drummer goes to count it off, simply saying, same God, key of C, is immensely helpful. I know this sounds really simple, but this simple step can help boost confidence of your band. It can help keep dead time down in rehearsal where everybody comes in on the wrong intro or the wrong key and everybody's like, what song is that? And everything just ceases. That's how rehearsals are instantly ruined. The other thing it can do is boost a mass amount of confidence as everyone is starting the song. When they hear the voice reminding them of what the name of the song is and what's the key, everyone's going to play that first note, that first chord, a little bit more confident. And it also gives them confidence that throughout the rest of the event, the rest of the gig, there is someone that is thinking about them, thinking about the team, and helping them remember all the details that they no longer have to remember. So step one is simple. At the start of every song, whether it be a rehearsal or whether it be actually at the event, say the song name and say the key of the song. I'm telling you, your band will thank you a lot. Let's go to step two. Step two is to call out or warn the band of verse one for every single song. Now, when I MD, for the most part, I'm MDing in context where we have tracks, which means we have guide cues that say intro, verse, all those things. I'm not having to do all of that a lot. But I have found over the years that one of the things I always do kind of innately is that before that verse one guide cue, so the band's playing the intro, before that verse one guide cue, I will say, Almost every single time, here comes the verse. Now, why do I do that? Um, I think I do it because it's the beginning of the song. The singer is about to have their first moment where they're singing. And having the whole band locked in in that moment it just makes for smooth sailing for the rest of the song. This moment helps ensure that every song starts really well. Because I can't tell you how many times I've had singers jump in a little bit early. The band's still doing the intro, and the verse starts, and the band plays the wrong chord. Or I've had the singer go into verse one really hesitant, because they're not really sure if they're right or not. I've also had singers um, that just kind of don't really start, even on that verse cue. They just kind of, something about the intro happens, they get a little nervous, and they just kind of zone out. So me warning them of the verse that's coming, again, I don't do this for every song section. I found that if I do this for verse one, the rest of the song goes really smooth. I've kind of learned that songs that start really well almost always finish really well. And songs that start horrible, well, they almost always end horrible. So this moment, cueing the verse one always helps things get off to a good start. So back to step two, call out verse one or warn of verse one before every song. Here's step number three. If you want to become a music director, you've never done this before, Here's what I tell you to do. You can simply count out bridges for your band. One of the greatest markers of worship music, and I know it's the, the end of a thousand jokes, but it is true, is that it's it's really repetitive. Some worship songs, you sing the bridge three times. Uh, we do some at our church that go upwards of six times. In some ways, the way you count the bridges are even confusing. Like, in Same God, uh, by Elevation Worship, Two bridges musically, meaning two passes of the chord progression, is actually one one bridge 
um, the way that the way that they view it. So you're really doing three bridges, but you're really singing six sections. So it can get really, really confusing for musicians. And on these bridges that build really consistently, it's important for all of our musicians and singers to know where they are because we've all been there where the drummer starts building really aggressive on bridge three, but you still have two more bridges to go and you're out of energy. Or you've been there when the vocalist flips way up to a high harmony on bridge two and all the energy is there, but you still have a lot of bridges to go. You've probably also been there when there's four bridges of a song and on bridge four, the band's not near as big as it needs it to be. So one of the easiest things you can do as an MD just to, to be really helpful is to count out the bridges for your band. Um, the way that I would recommend you do this is not to say, here comes bridge one, here comes bridge two, here comes bridge three, because that doesn't help them know an end goal. Here's what I would always suggest. During the instrumental before the bridge, tell the band, how many bridges are coming up? Something like this. Here we go. We got six bridges. Here we go. We got six of these. Here we go. We got four of these. Something like that. And I know I always say something weird like, here we go, but I'm convinced it helps the band understand they're about to receive communication. After that, you need to count the bridges down. So after bridge, let's say we're doing four bridges. Here's exactly how I would count it. I would say, here we go, four bridges. Then we would do bridge one. And then after bridge one, I would say, all right, we got three more. After bridge two, I would say we've got two more. And then on the last bridge, I would say last one. And I would say it very emphatically with the motion so that they know we need to build up really big. So to summarize that, you need to count the bridges for your band. That's the if you if you literally just did that one thing, you would be immensely helpful as a music director. And again, we don't count up. That's not helpful. We count down so they know, oh, I've got two. So the drummer knows I've got three more bridges. So this is how I need to space out my build. The bass player knows, okay, three more bridges. This is how I need to space things out for the way they're playing. All right, so step four is calling out alternate chords. A lot of worship music has um, alternate chords in it. And here's what I mean by that. We'll go back to the bridge example. If there are four bridges in a worship song, I would say there's a pretty good chance the last bridge might have different chords than the other three bridges. A really good example of this is a song called Rain Above It All by Bethel Music. The, um, the bridge progression is 6, 4, 1, 5. If you don't love numbers, then that is in the key of A, that is F sharp minor, D, A, E major, 6, 4, 1, 5. And that is the bridge for the entire song. Now, the last two bridges, they changed the chord progression completely, and it is actually amazing. So on the very last, uh, next to last bridge, instead of that five chord, they play a three minor chord. So a little music theory for you. So instead of an E major chord, they play a C sharp minor chord. And then on the very last bridge, instead of six, four, one, five, they play four, six, one, five. So they play D. F sharp minor, A, E. That progression is completely different. And again, your band's probably gonna, not going to remember that in the moment. Or they'll be like, wait, is this is this when we play the C sharp minor? Or is this when we play the C sharp minor? So if you could call that out beforehand, all right, here we go, C sharp minor. To the D, to the A, to the F sharp minor, to the E. Something like that. Everyone stays on the same page. If you don't feel like you're comfortable doing that, I think a, a really easy first step is just to call out, hey, here we go, alternate chords. Just so everyone knows to be on the same page with the alternate chords, even if you can't actually call out the chords. I think calling out alternate is way better than not calling out anything at all. But it really would be ideal if you could just memorize a few key moments or have it marked on your chart and call out the chords before you get there. And I typically do it about a beat, maybe two beats before the chord chains. So I would be like, to the four, to the one, or you can use letters, whatever is easier for you. Um, places where you see this a lot in worship music, you see it really frequently in bridges. And then you see it a lot when there's um, a lot of like hymn type worship songs. King of Kings does this. The, the, the verse already always starts on a one or a D chord. And the very last verse, the whole band will drop out and it'll start on like a B minor or a six minor chord. 
Um, you also see this a lot on sometimes a down chorus if they want to bring some tension to it. We'll start on a six. So you see this a lot in bridges and kind of down verses on hymns type stuff. You also see it a lot when you there are tags in songs. So let's go back to King of Kings. I think this is easy. It says, praise forever to the King of Kings at the end of the chorus. Praise forever to the King of Kings. That's what it says. It says it twice on that last chorus. It's the only time it says it twice. So after that first one, it says G forever to the A to the B minor. That's the tag. It lands on a B minor. And then G forever to the A lands on a D. So the normal chord progression is G, A, D, but on the tag, it goes G, A, B minor, G, A, D. That's a four, five, six, and then a four, five, one. That happens a lot in tags. So calling that out for our band is really, really helpful for them. So here's step five, and it's our final step of my kind of beginner's guide to becoming a music director. And this is, I mean, obscenely simple, but I promise, trust me, it's really helpful. You just need to say something. I have been blown away at how much people say I help them when I'm a music director, even when I, I say almost nothing on the microphone. But here's what I've found. Having a really good presence, having a really calm demeanor, man, it just gives the whole band, the whole team so much confidence. And it helps everyone to just shake the nerves off and enjoy getting to play music together. So there's something about somebody that's just on the mic that says, all right, here we go, King of Kings. And that's all you say that just breathes calmness over everybody. And I've noticed that when I do this, uh, we play better, we have more fun, people are less nervous, and ultimately, I mean, not to get in the leadership piece of it for, for a second, but I think everybody just leads worship a lot better when they know there's someone with a microphone that's helping them think about things and going to help them there, and someone that is just presenting a calm and stable demeanor. This last part is up to your discretion. But sometimes, I think using a music director mic, an MD mic, for an occasional joke, again, discretion. Uh, for some encouragement that sounded great or whatever, just for general excitement can just help everyone cut loose and enjoy playing better. And I think we all know that when we play in a way that we're having fun, that we play better, we sound better, we lead better. It's a more enjoyable experience and uh, it's just overall a better thing. So these are my five steps, once again, to a beginner's guide to becoming a music director. Pretend you've never, ever done this before, and your worship leader calls you on a Saturday and says, hey, I need you to MD tomorrow. These are the five things I would start by doing. I would name the song name and the key of the song before every single song. Don't skip this step. I really would. I would name the song name and the key of the song before every single song. I would warn people of verse 1. Before every song, I would count bridges out. I would not count up. I would not say bridge one, bridge two, bridge three. I would say three more, two more, last one. I would count the bridges. I would, step four, I would warn our band of alternate chords that are coming up. I would either say the chord progression blatantly, I would tell them what it is, or, I, or at least I would say, here come the alternate chords. And step five is I would just say something. I would be a good presence. I would give the band some encouragement and I would try my best to be a model of stability, a model of calmness, and a model that reminds people what we're doing is fun and we need to all loosen up a little bit. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the MD School Podcast. If this was helpful for you in any ways, please like this, subscribe on YouTube, or leave a rating and follow along on Spotify or wherever you get podcasts. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.